So we're getting into geometric proofs here, and this is some of the most ancient and realist maths out there. Uh, now let's cast our mind way back to like ancient Greek times. Think about this kind of action. A bunch of guys standing around in robes with sticks, drawing geometric figures in the sand and trying to come up with mathematical ideas. Now the Greeks didn't have a monopoly on this. Um, Babylonians, the Chinese, the Arab world, like all over the world, they were doing things like this. People are curious. They want to know this stuff. Uh, so here's one thing that they might have scratched into the sand. So our hero draws a circle in the sand and then he cuts that circle in half. Then the next thing he does is pick a random point somewhere else on the circle. And now he takes that random point and he draws lines from here and from here to that random point. And then he shows this drawing to all of his friends and he thinks, hey, hey guys, don't you think uh, this looks like a right angle? And everyone's like, yeah, that kind of does look like a right angle. And he says, I wonder if it is. And then he makes something called a conjecture. So this is a pretty decent definition of a conjecture. It's a mathematical statement that has not yet been rigorously proved. He says, right, I've drawn this semicircle here. I'll just put a center in there so you know that this is a semicircle. I've picked a random point, and it could have been any point. I could have picked this one. I could have picked that one. I could have picked that one. I could have picked that one. And I think that if I draw two lines to that point, I'll always get a right angle. And at the moment, it's just a conjecture. And then he sits down and proves it. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to prove it. Now, you might want to pause the video here and try proving it yourself. All right, so when I'm proving this, it's going to be important to be able to refer to sides and angles and things like that. So I'm just going to label this up a little bit. I'll call this point A. I'll call this point B. I'll call this point C and I'll call this point O, O for origin. And I'm going to do something called a construction. So I'm going to draw a line from B to O. And constructions in proofs are, are really, really useful. And I'm going to write that as I'm doing it. All right, so I've constructed a line B, O. Now, this is a circle and this is the center. So what can we sort of ascertain about this bit here or this bit here or this bit here? They're all equal. They're all radiuses of the circle. This length is equal to this length, because that's a radius and that's a radius, which is equal to this length here. And I can write that as line AO is equal to line BO, which is equal to line CO. And the reason for that is they are all radius, the plural of which is radii. All right, so now that I know that AO, BO, and CO are all radii, uh, I can look at this triangle here, triangle ABO, and I just write a triangle in there, and look at triangle ABO. It's an isosceles triangle, and triangle B uh, or COB or BOC, however you want to say it, is also an isosceles triangle. So triangle ABO and triangle B, O, C, uh, isosceles. And the way that we know that they're isosceles is uh, the two sides are the same. Okay, now what can we do from here? Well, let's call this angle X, right? Now, if this is angle X, B, A, O, so we can say that angle B, A, O is equal to angle ABO, this angle here, ABO. And the reason they're equal is because they're isosceles. Okay, two equal angles, two equal, sorry, two equal sides, two equal angles. And we can do exactly the same thing with this triangle here. I can call this Y, and I can say that angle OCB is equal to angle OBC, for the same reason, they're isosceles. So I can say that angle OCB is equal to angle OBC. And that's because they're isosceles. And really, I'm very close to the end of my proof here because I've been focusing on these small triangles and I've been focusing on this small triangle. But what about this big triangle? Well, I know this angle is X. I know this angle is Y. I know this half of this, or not half, 
this piece of that angle is x and I know that this piece of that angle is y and this is a triangle and the internal angles of a triangle are 180. So I can say that x plus y plus x plus y because that angle is x plus y equals 180. Now that's x plus x which is 2x that's y plus y, which is 2y. I can say that 2y is equal, 2x plus 2y is 180. Now I should just slow down a little bit. The reason this line exists is because the internal angles of a triangle add up 180. Okay, from here, 2x plus 2y equals 180, which means that 2x plus y equals 180. And I can divide both sides by 2 to get x plus y equals 90. And x plus y is equal to angle ABC, therefore x plus y equals angle ABC, therefore, therefore we have a right angle. And we can finish off by using the letters Q. E, D, which stand for quad erat demonstratum, which means it has been demonstrated that the angle in a semicircle is always a right angle. That's it.